I'll be making an Ohara tall base arrangement in slanting style. And for my main material, I will be using a willow, the salix. And this willow's branch is fairly fresh, which means it's pliable. So I'll be able to create a curve. And so I want to be very careful and make sure I'm gentle but firm, otherwise you may break the stem. So I think this is about the correct length. I'm going to clean up the edge. So I don't worry about bumping into it when I insert other branches. So I need it to stay and I'm going to use a crossbar. Maybe this one. Okay. So the subject branch is actually going to hit the upper right corner of the container. So the front of the arrangement is facing you. So I've cut a stem, a smaller branch, and I'm going to attach it to the main stem. There are several ways of attaching it. Uh, I'll show you some ways a little later. But the most important thing is that this crossbar is on there firmly, which means when I move it, the whole branch moves. If that doesn't happen and it's loose, then it's really not helping the main branch. So I want to slant it down about 70 degrees. So 90 degrees is all the way down, you know, directly flat, so not quite all the way down. So that's my subject branch. Now, my secondary branch, since this is a single stem, what I'd like to do is get one for the secondary that's different. So I think I'll, I like this one, but I don't need it that long. Okay. And what's going to happen is I'm going to insert it underneath the subject stem and it will actually hit the container down here. And so what I want to do is make sure it's long enough, clean it up. Okay. And in this case, I'm going to use a vertical bar because I know this will start spinning or come out of place. So I'm going to use a vertical bar to help keep it in place. I've split it and I grab a skewer. You can also use a, another piece of, of willow to keep it in place. And I'm going to insert it underneath the subject and then have it flow back. So the subject flows forward. We're going to balance it by having the secondary flow back. Now, the third branch that you insert for this particular style is the tall filler on the subject. And let me show you where, where you insert that. Here are the two branches already inserted into the container. This is the subject's branch and the secondary branch. Notice there's this space that's created, sort of a triangle. And it's in that space that we will insert the tall filler. So it'll go in here. So when selecting a tall filler for the subject, what you want to do is find a stem that's younger and lighter than the subject branch. And it's going to flow towards the subject and then back into the center of the arrangement. But it should be a gentle movement. And so just a sense that it's going to flow out towards the subject and then back into the center of the arrangement. Now, 
Another important thing to remember when selecting this brand, in my experience, is that it has a fairly uh, substantial branch. And by that I mean you don't want anything too thin. If the branch is too thin, it's going to be hard to get it to stay in place for this particular position. And so, again, I'm going to clean. I'm going to manipulate it just slightly. And again, I'm going to use a vertical helper stem, a stay. So I'm going to split the end, insert, insert the, the skewer, and then place it in and let it hit the back wall and then release it. So now we have three stems, the subject, secondary, and tall cellar. The next thing I'm going to insert is the object. And for the object, I'm going to use uh, this Asiatic lily. And I think I need all of these buds. And the subject swings to the left, so to balance it, the object is going to swing to the right. And because this is a large flower, especially in comparison to the size of the willow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it shorter than it normally would. Okay. And I'm going to insert it underneath the subject stem, and it'll hit this side of the wall. I can tell it's going to try to swing to one side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crush the very end and have it come down as a vertical stick. And again, I am going to insert it. It's still spinning too much, so I'm going to use a skewer. And you want to insert the skewer. You don't want it to pierce the entire stem. And you want it very close to the edge. Okay. So there we go. So, subject secondary object, you can see the triangle here, from here. And so the next thing I'm going to put in is the, so there's no magic here. You just have to keep inserting them and being gentle. Okay. Notice there's a big opening here. So I'm going to add the object low filler. And it's going to come right in here. So I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to crush and again, try to use it, the own, its own stem as the brace. And I'm going to insert it and then let it go. We have a few more stems. Let me add the object tall filler. And it will go here. It's actually going to hit the wall at the back of the container. And again, I'm going to try to crush the stem where it's going to hit the wall. so that I can use it to hopefully stabilize it. Let's see. Okay. So there are a couple more filler stems on the subject secondary group. There's always the one that cascades down. Okay. We always call that here the low filler. Okay. It helps break up 
the rim of the container so that something flows down. And again, because I'm using a fresh willow, I can manipulate it and get the curve I need and get it to flow down, okay? There's the final filler is actually to help between the subject and the secondary. There's a big space here. So we wanna add another filler here. little too long. And I've removed the covering on a couple of the catkins at the top so you see the silvery white. So that in itself is fine, but typically when we use materials, branches that don't have leaves, we'll use an auxiliary material to help add fullness and interest because there are no leaves. And so in this case, I'll be using just a little bit of this acacia mimosa. And again, this is more of an auxiliary material. They're I don't want to use too much of it. And there's no specific rules on where to place this material. Let's see. And you can use this auxiliary material anywhere in the arrangement. So it doesn't have to all be in a certain area. You don't want to use too much of it though. You want some areas where it's heavy, some areas where it's light, areas where there is none at all. That will create much more interesting effect. So a O'Hara tall base slanting style of range pack. We're using willow, Asiatic lilies, and a mimosa, acacia mimosa. Uh, 